Um, today we are doing Zoom on Nature at the Clayhead Trail South. Um, this is actually the fourth Clayhead Trail uh, Zoom since we started last summer, and I think it completes the Clayhead um, Trail system. So uh, with that, we'll get right started uh, today. Oops. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to start with this very complicated map, <laughs> uh, just so you, and it, after all, it is on occasion referred to as the maze, although I always call it the Clayhead Trails. But if you're familiar at all, you can come into the parking lot from Corn Neck Road and park here. So today we will be taking off from the uh, trailhead parking area and we'll be going along a pretty traditional part of the route that takes you out to the, um, to the, edge, of the, um, to the edge of the bluff, to the ocean. And then we're going to be exploring the southern end. So we'll start up the bluff edge and we're gonna do basically three loops. The first loop here, which is a wonderful area, um, it's called the Silasin Lot. And I'll talk a lot about that when we get there. Then we'll come back out and we'll go and then we'll do uh, two ways of, of exiting this these loops. So you have two options for uh, loops. One will be the one we do, oops, oh, I hate that. Um, this way out to the road and then I'll come back and we'll pick up our steps here and do this slightly bigger lot, uh, loop out to the road. And um, the blue indicates flowing water. On Block Island, we often think, we don't think of us as having rivers and streams and creeks and things like that, but we actually have a lot of streams running between water bodies and um, uh, we'll be passing over many places where water is not deep, it's not a coursing river by any stretch, but it's water all the time and uh, this is Stump Pond and a lot of this water originates from there. There's actually another pond to the north which also contributes, but I thought we wouldn't make this uh, too complicated. And then I put in the green, which is the traditional Clayhead Trail uh, bluff walk, which is the one that most people want to take and it goes all the way uh, northward. So that that is our uh, starting off and we better get started. So uh, we'll start off right at Corneck Road with some landmarks to figure out how to get to where we're going to get started. And um, the very um, Probably many people know this wonderful red house with the white gingerbread. It's right at, right, um, right after uh, the Clayhead Trail uh, Road, and um, there's a um, a trail um, a marker. There's several of these tall, thin markers. This one's right on Corneck Road. It says Clayhead Trail, and it marks this road. So that's where you're going to go, and about when you're about maybe two thirds of the way down, you'll come to, uh, you just keep following the road. You don't take any turns. You just more or less follow it straight. Uh, and there'll be a few of these tall, thin pointy markers. Again, this one says private road because it's referring to the road that goes off to the left there. And that is the road that goes to Lapham's. And this is the wonderful road that goes to the uh, parking area. Um, and so park and you can get out and then head over to the um, trailhead. Now we have a few things there. We have a big sign that says Clayhead Nature Trail and all the sponsors. The, this is actually, um, this part of the trail is owned by the, the Department of Bi Environmental Management for the state of Rhode Island. And um, you sh should call them about the condition of the road in the parking lot. <laughs> But once you get past that, you can check out the kiosk, which uh, the Nature Conservancy does maintain with all kinds of information about uh, what you might see on this trailhead and also information about other programs that we may be having. It's not exactly updated for this year, but it will be soon. And with that, we'll go through the barway and start our way. Um, um, and right off, it's very uh, wooded and tall trees. There's a lot of maple trees, mostly swamp maple trees blooming on Block Island right now. But there are also many other kinds of maples. And in this particular area, there's a lot of these big sort of rounded top 
um, sycamore maples right along here. They have a little bit smoother gray bark and they haven't quite, they're not quite the same level of blooming um, as uh, the, the swamp red maples are, but they will be soon. But there's quite a few in here and they're quite stately, especially right now. Um, and of course, every once in a while, you know, as much as it is spring, it's still a lot of gray on Block Island. A lot of things are turning green. I'll talk about what that is. There's a lot of green happening, but it's not a lot of things. There's two or three species that are turning green. But our happy dandelions are uh, starting to come up everywhere. And uh, you just, I think I just take, keep taking dandelion pictures just so I keep smiling because they just make me happy. So you uh, follow that trail for a while and you'll come to a bend and you'll be into walking into this. It's been relatively flat up until this point. Um, and the, this big field just got mowed. And here's another one of the, here's the perfect sort of classic form of the uh, sycamore maple, this big sort of almost egg shaped oval. Um, and uh, it's, it's right there just now. This is just how it looks right now. And it's, things will change fast. And then on the um, right side of the path are several other um, smaller, some cherries and some maples and uh, some other things. But in the grasses, there's lots of uh, flowers to be seen. Of course, there are a few dead a few dead trees as well. And we call that habitat. It's a habitat tree, a habitat for, for animals. And uh, so we like to leave the standing dead wood and all kinds of things living in there. I will say, <laughs> I did not do this, but that would be a good tree to put an orb in. I have, I sh uh, which reminds me that I have hidden in many of these photographs today, orbs. So you might wanna be looking for those. And, um, just for the fun of it, not not none of them indicate where the, I left the one orb on this journey, but I gave you lots of hints in the places where I do show them. But if you look at your feet in this area of the um, habitat tree, you will see this low little purplish flower that's just starting to grow. Uh, it will get a little taller than it is now. This is uh, prunella. It's also it's uh, known as self heal or heal all. It's really quite beautiful. Um, it is a um, a mint. It's in the mint family, although it does not smell like mint, but it has some uh, distinctive uh, mint like features. One is that the leaves are alternate. In the, uh, or sorry, opposite. They're opposite of each other on the stem rather than alternating. So there's two leaves opposite here, two more opposite here. And their individual flowers are, you know, they, they're, they're irregular and they like have lips. Um, so it's, um, it comes in pretty, uh, can be very light blue to this very dark purpley blue, but prunella will start to be growing up in our grasses. Um, in our, uh, you know, traveled areas all over the island. I will say that most of the flowers that I have been lucky enough to get for this are all very small and very, uh, they make their habit in very low um, uh, settings. So you're likely to be walking on them. So watch your feet. And this is another one of them. This is a beautiful little flower called the Star of Bethlehem. It's in the lily family. It's very tiny. Um, <clears throat> this one I put in because it will be blooming in about three weeks. Uh, this photo was taken last year, but it was taken in this very field uh, to the, well, actually on both sides of the path after you pass that big, beautiful, um, uh, sycamore maple. So if you happen to be out, and you see a little white flower, again, no more than four inches off the ground. Uh, it is this beautiful star of Bethlehem. And then as you come through that little field and past the tree, you come to the top of the hill. Um, we, you'll see many times on this walk today, places where the path is being rerouted because erosion is a constant uh, problem in this area because um, this part of Block Island, this upper layer is all silt and sand and uh, very erosive materials. And a lot of foot traffic means that uh, things erode. So this used to be the path. 
You've tried to block it off with some rocks. It's very unsure footing to get people to follow around this sort of oxbow, which will bring you out over here. And then you can see this beautiful, this great, it's very fine talc-like uh, erosive um, sand, uh, silt. And when you're walking on that, uh, it gets slippery muddy and it gets slippery slidey um, with the gran granules of the sand. So always be careful. This is a fairly steep uh, uh, decline. And from here though, there are some beautiful views. If you can, and this is great. This type of year, uh, there's no leaves on most things yet. You're starting to get some, but uh, for the most part, there are no leaves. So you can see things that you won't be able to see in about two months, uh, like this great view of the backside of the Littlefield Farm across the Clayhead Swamp uh, Pond. And uh, if you look a little more to the east, there's the view there. Um, and uh, for us birders, this is a great place to look at ducks in the winter where you can actually uh, get a view of the pond. Um, and uh, a few years ago, we actually had a, uh, a trumpeter swan in this pond. Uh, luckily it was winter and we could, we could actually see it. So on we go, we have gone down the hill onto the path, we've made it down, haven't slid or uh, gone down on our butts and we're at the, the rest of the trip is, um, the walking is, uh, is pretty stable. Um, but that first, you gotta really watch it on that first uh, descent. But, a lots of shad right now growing, um, very distinctive forms. Again, this is the shad. This is the same shad looking at it from the other way. Beautiful, you know, like tr many tr multiple trunks coming out, smooth gray bark, very distinctive looking. And um, this is, I bet, you know, the next time I give one of these shad, it's gonna be filled with white blossoms and we will be getting away from this time of year where we can see so much of the structure of the plant life. As we go down, you, it's, uh, we've come to our first uh, boardwalk to cross over the water, but I also will be talking quite a bit throughout about what we're seeing greening up here. And this is a just beautiful green tangle of, uh, Japanese honeysuckle and uh, multiflora rose. And it's intertwined with it and each, with itself and with each other. And uh, soon this is the mass of green that will be keeping us from seeing things through the brush. And uh, more on that later. But here's another great uh, boardwalk. I can remember when this was newly built and this sort of third of the, of the boardwalk is now covered over with, with land. Uh, sometimes water is actually seeping right over here. And here's the, uh, where it is, there's water. You can tell, I think, that it's not that quickly moving, but it is moving water. And as I say, sometimes we haven't had a very dry spring so far, but when it's a wet spring, the water is coming over these boards. So, uh, this water is going into the Clayhead Swamp. A little bit further down the path, uh, the path has been sort of patched up with some cobbles. Again, because of the silty nature of this, um, of this substrate here, it can be very slippery when it's wet. And these cobbles really help to uh, keep your footing. And it gives you a little indication that this is one of the only places where you can sort of peek out into the pond and, and see what's there. Um, again, you have to watch your footing. And in the summertime, I've been known to walk out here and to grab a vine to, to steady myself up and realize that I'm holding on to a nice healthy stalk of poison ivy. So no poison ivy showing itself yet, but something to always be mindful of. But the sphagnum moss is, uh, is doing well it, because it's so wet here. Um, nice little view. Again, a great place to go and see, um, get on the eye level, almost the surface level with ducks and geese that may be spending the winter there. And off to the side, on the other side of the uh, sort of the little path where the, the sphagnum was on the left. And on the right, I look down and there's a little tiny American holly. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of those uh, this winter, again, because it it is evergreen. So 
it's not being overtaken by all the other things that are green. So you actually see them and you'll see that there's lots of baby hollies strewn throughout the island. Um, and uh, all of a sudden there was one there. That'll be a great place for a holly. I hope it grows up. And on we go a little bit further and we've come to a second boardwalk on this first part of this path. Again, this gets very wet. Uh, sometimes water is also flowing all over these uh, boards. And again, the, the, the um, Clayhead Swamp Pond is, is all the time so far on our right. Now you can tell by the change in substrate, we're no longer mud and water, now it's getting sandy. We're getting near the end of the path towards the edge of the island. And um, you can start to hear it. I often, um, many summers, I do night evening walks down this path uh, and get people using their other senses besides sight. And you uh, suddenly there comes a point right a little before this spot where you start, oh, I can hear the ocean. And so the din of uh, peepers has given way to the ocean sound. And you can, also there's a change of smell. The swampy of the fresh water gives way to the salty, sandy smell of the ocean. So we're changing habitats. And before we head off up to the bluff, you look over and this is where the great, uh, the Clayhead Swamp meets the beach. And it's, uh, this is actually water um, and it's very wet. So somebody's done a little log bridge in here. Um, and then it's actually flowing out. This was actually quite beautiful the other day when I took this. This is uh, not necessarily a bad thing. This is green filamentous algae and it's just growing and, and it's attached to the rocks and other things in this area. Um, and it's, but it's taken the form, it's filamentous of the flow of water. So it's sort of like this beautiful green plume. I'm not sure, uh, there's lots of algaes that are not a problem, that, that it is another plant and it's a photosynthesizing plant and um, it's just adding a lot of uh, organic material to the area. Um, and some of the upper ponds and upper, I can't call them rivers, but I can't even really call them streams, but wet courses. I've actually found eels and uh, eels, the American eel, uh, as you may know, spends a good part of its life in the ocean and then comes back upstream. And I have found eels way up at the top of Clayhead where you think we're too far away from the ocean, but this is where an eel would make its way um, into, um, into the system. It would come at high tide. Eels can do, do pretty well. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely, it can go over wet meadow. And so it can, it can come, up, come up that course and, and get into the system. So I turn around, I'm headed back up and I look at my feet and there are these tiny, tiny plants. Uh, and uh, this one is a, a chickweed on the, <clears throat> on, the, on the left and it's tiny. It's, it's a quarter of an inch wide. And this little tiny uh, set of leaves is uh, Rosa rugosa. So Rosa rugosa is just starting to uh, put out its buds in, of leaves. And um, that's what it is, this sort of filly, uh, uh, frilly leaf. Uh, I say Rosa rugosa, you may know it as the beach rose. And here's a close up of this beautiful little chickweed. Uh, again, this is less than a quarter of an inch. So tiny flowers today. So we're turning away from the swamp and we're taking one last look at the beach. Who wants to go to the beach? I'd rather go up the hill. And I'll follow the Clayhead Trail, oh, Sandy. And it makes these switchbacks trying to uh, correct for uh, erosion again. And when you look at the right over here, this has all been barricaded to try to close off this old path because it, not only is it too rutted, it's too close to the edge of the bluff to be safe. So we've rerouted uh, several years ago and try to do a little bit of a switch back to try to, to protect the land a little bit more. But along the way, I saw more signs of life. The only shad bush that had buds on it in my walk so far 
was along this path and it was just off to the left <clears throat> in a sunny warm spot protected by um, most uh, a high brush on either side. And then on the uh, complete other side of the path was some um, two brand new soft uh, fuzzy common mullein leaves just coming up out of the bank. And uh, you can see they get a lot of sand because there's sand throughout, but um, uh, it was such a beautiful color and uh, sight to see new leaves uh, growing up. And you get up that switchback and you can stop and look and turn around and you can see uh, the clayhead swamp. They call it the swamp, but obviously it's quite a big pond as well. This is the marshland where this swamp drains out. It's fairly wide. It's, it's down in this area that uh, we stopped to look at where it's actually uh, funneling out into the ocean. 24 seven water is running out of this. Lots of water, groundwater seeping out of Block Island everywhere. But just a beautiful view. Um, one of the, I think one of the prettiest views on the Clayhead Trail. The others are all very dramatic of the bluffs, but Something about the texture and the landscape um, of this view is, um, I always stop to look at it. Plus it's at the top of a hill, so it's a good place to stop. So as you go along a little further, we've come to, we're about to come to our first intersection of another path. Uh, but you go through this old stone wall, you know, and uh, if you've been watching any of these, you know that I cannot resist looking at the lichen on the stones and trying to look at them closely enough to see what I can see about them, their pattern. To me, this particular lichen up close and personal looks like elephant skin. Um, but these are the little pore pockets where spores can be released. Um, and then it, this is obviously a, a really nice quarter a mix of granite. So, and that's right on this rock right there. So just going past that little rocky place, we're going to be taking this path right here. There's another one of these guideposts and it, it's right here. It's the same one. It, it says the nature trail is this way, but this path, you can take it in. Now the great thing about this little place, oops, on my way, I looked down on the ground and I saw this and I bet you've all seen this before and wondered, what is that? You see it fairly often, but you know, it's not, everywhere. And uh, there it is up close. It's a gall. And a gall is a swelling of plant tissue. It's also fun, uh, fungi and other things will have it, but plant tissue. And it's caused by many things. A gall can be caused by, you know, a virus, but more often they're caused by an insect that has uh, intruded and um, expanded in the cells of the stem and expanded it out and made it grow into a cavity where it can lay its eggs and its, its um, worms or its larvae can hatch out. So I broke this one open just to look at it. I didn't find any live critters, um, but there's obviously, a, it's been well chewed on and digested and uh, you can see the layers of the, of the stem there. So it's quite interesting uh, if you like that kind of thing, which I sort of do. Uh, sometimes when you break these open, you can actually find the, uh, the larvae of whatever insect has, um, uh, has left its, its eggs there uh, to be protected until the larvae can fend for themselves. Um, so galls. Okay. Now we're going to turn into this, this little um, loop, which is called the Silasin lot um, right, by the and I think you, many of you probably know that the Lapham family um, purchased all of this land in the late, early 1960s and have maintained the um, path and the trails and created the trails. And, um, and they named most of the lots, the Stonewall enclosed lots, um, most of which are named after birds, but a few are named after uh, deed, um, old deed names. So this was called the Silasin lot. But I happen to love this, this place. Um, for one thing, it's a small loop with only one entrance and exit. And even though there's lots of paths within it, it's sort of more cloverleaf-like. 
they're, they're small, short, you can see through them and around them. It's an ideal place in the winter to walk because it's uh, low, it's in a little hollow and it's usually protected in all wind directions. And it's a great place for an afternoon picnic, it's always warm. I always thought if I was in charge of a bunch of kids, I would take them in here, have somebody standing here by the entry exit and let the kids just have a field day playing hide and seek and running around between and around all of the wonderful plantings. And um, it's warm and protected. And um, I can't recommend this, um, this little loop enough. It's one of my favorite spots in the Clayhead trail system. So as you go through that little gapway, you can either go to the left uh, or you can go to the right. And um, if you go either way, you can reverse your steps or you can come out the opposite way. And you see there's you will see there are lots of wonderful plantings in this area, little clumps of daffodils, some blooming, some yet to be blooming. And we go along and all of a sudden I hear all this chittering going on in the uh, bushes. I, these are not stellar, but they get, you get the idea. This was a, one of the few warblers uh, that we've had this winter. It's the myrtle warbler, also known as the yellow rump warbler. Um, and I zoomed in with my relatively small camera. And even though it's a little fuzzy, these are the perfect per pictures to show you why it's called the yellow rumped warbler. Um, here you can see its little head peeking out. But here you're seeing totally the backside with its little yellow rump and uh, its little pigeon toes holding onto that branch. Um, they made me almost as happy, well, probably even more happy than the dandelions. Um, so, and locally there's a yellow rump warblers are either myrtle warblers on the east or Audubon warblers on the west coast. And uh, so it's okay to call these myrtle warblers, although I, the, the real birders would always say yellow rumped warbler. I will always say myrtle warbler. As you go along, you see more of the wonderful plantings uh, that the Lapham family has done over the years. Um, and this is, although it's beautiful now for a number of reasons, it's gonna be even more beautiful in about a month because uh, it's in a hollow where it's protected and the rhododendrons have gotten to be quite tall. And they're just beautiful and they're shaped, they're sort of vase-like. Uh, and um, as I say, it's worth the trip in another month. But it's also worth the trip now. It's got this, in the center of this sort of end loop, it's got this magnificent uh, larch um, and daffodils all around. Um, as I said, rhododendrons. Um, daffodils and over the way, I took this because here are the daffodils, here's the roadies. Behind me is that giant larch and to the right is a little stone wall and over the stone wall, you can actually hear the water running here. It's coming down so fast. And this is part of that system that's running down towards uh, the clayhead swamp, um, but hidden because of all the brush on the other side but uh, running water uh, nevertheless. And uh, the, the larch right now are just sprouting. Uh, if you know, larch is a cone bearing, a conifer that um, is not evergreen. It drops all of its needles in the, in the fall and now they're starting to grow. And I always think they look like the ends of little electric toothbrushes when they start, but never mind. They are beautiful right now, and it will get this beautiful, soft, green, fresh needles on this giant larch uh, surrounded by rhododendrons in just a short while. So think about this as a walk later in the summer. Of course, there's plenty of this. Uh, uh, this is honeysuckle, but honeysuckle and bittersweet are both known for their twining and choking out and twisting around itself and each other. Um, the bittersweet hasn't leafed out. So most of what we're seeing is the beginning of um, the um, honeysuckle, but that is just a phenomenal piece of, you couldn't create that if you were an artist. Nature, nature can do it. And uh, you have to admire it 
even if it is um, a pain in the neck and is having to be controlled to keep it from taking down that magnificent larch. <clears throat> now we're heading out the other end. Um, when this is the area I said, if you go right, you would go into this. It's kind of a long field. Um, right now it's been mowed. Uh, and I look at the landscape at the colors, amazing colors, this tawny, the green, back here a little red, I blew it up here, it is a little red. This is the swamp maple blooming with those beautiful, magnificent red flowers that are everywhere right now. And this center part doesn't get mowed too much because it's very wet, a lot of groundwater right here. But the irises, the blue flag, the slender leaf blue flag irises, again, in early June, um, a sight to behold. So once a month trip to the Silas and Lot this year will produce a whole new bouquet every time. And it's pretty peaceful in there. Maybe not now that I've told hordes of people to go there, but hey, whatever, enjoy it. And some of these guys, lots of robins dancing around. And I like that I got the one on the on the right about to, is taking flight. And so now we've come back out to the path and just gone down the path a little bit. This path has another marker and it indicates that you are to stay on the path. This you should not go this path. Um, it's just a shortcut to the house. It doesn't offer any views or any anything that you would really want to see, uh, but it will land you in the uh, laundry line of the Lapham house. So um, there's a reason why there's a marker there specifically directing you uh, onward. And so we'll go onward around the corner and we're starting to see a glimpse of another patch of daffodils. It's amazing how many, we're used to seeing the daffodils around the Lapham House. There are thousands throughout the Clayhead Trail system in little patches, little surprise patches. Um, and just, you come around the bend and again, it's like, oh, beautiful. And you go around the bend and actually right across from that big patch on the other side, tucked in the brush, some volunteer daffodils coming up. They're starting to self-seed themselves in the funniest places. And if you keep going, more switchbacking because of more um, cutting off old eroding uh, paths that we're getting too close to the edge. You'll see that this one, I think I show, oh, I don't. Well, this one comes out at this spot um, and there are big boulders put in, in the view to the, you're not gonna see it here because I forgot to put that photo in, but to the right, there's some boulders to keep you away from the edge of the bluff. There was a very popular place for people to walk out and it was really getting uh, very dangerous. And so they blocked it off and, and moved the path around it. So if you were to keep going to the straight or north this way, this is the main Clayhead Trail. And this is the trail you would follow almost always. Uh, when on a walk at the Clayhead Trails. Only one time a year is it worth it to take this alternate route uh, to the left. And uh, it's a short little spur, you go up and you crest this little tiny hill. And as you go around the corner, this is what you see. And um, I'm sure there are many of you who have been there. Uh, the day I was uh, taking this picture, I found somebody about, I don't know, couple thousand feet beyond this wondering where the daffodils were. Um, so lots of people do go here, but I always like to remind people this is a private residence and the family is here intermittently. I'm there a lot because there's bird banding time, but they do, uh, they know and are fine with the fact that people can come around here and just follow the path along the upper edge back into the main paths. Um, do not, please do not walk through the through the house uh, yard. But plenty of opportunities to enjoy the view and walk among the daffodils, take some pictures. And you're moving towards these two um, evergreens. I get a lot of questions about this stone. This monument is called the Blue Stone uh, because it says it's the Blue Stone right there. 
And you can see it right there, it says bluestone. So that must be the bluestone. Uh, it's another uh, old deed name for this lot. It was called the bluestone lot. And um, the uh, Lapham's carpenter erected this stone up there and called it the bluestone. And nobody really knows quite why. But never mind, go around it and enjoy it. Uh, and then keep going. And you're going to be going out this pot part right here. Um, and when you get through that gap way, you look forward and you see that big uh, evergreen and you'll see a little sign right there. But before you get there, oh, look at all those green marks. Um, huh. You, um, if you turn around, this will be the view. Um, and this is looking back through that big uh, tall evergreen. Uh, I think it's a spruce actually, uh, back at, at once you've come before heading back into the pass. Um, and then we have, um, we turned around, now we're gonna take this, this path. I'm distracted by these green lines. I have no idea where they are, where they've come from, um, but never mind. Um, uh, hey Kim, I think someone had act. Someone was able to draw on them on the screen. I'm not really sure or on the Zoom. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so just right. I know I was trying to figure that myself, but I would just ignore them. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm trying to. <laughs> so we're going to take this first uh, left, and it's a little sign. So you and you can almost read it if you imagine. It says is a arrow and it says to Corn Neck Road. And so we're gonna go this way and you'll go under, now remember this spot where we've just been. Um, so we're gonna to go to the left and follow that out underneath the branch and pass another little surprise bunch of daffodils and it will bring you right up to the edge of the road, a little well pump house there and a very nice, sign that's right here on the road um, it, and it, you would go up here to the house with a it says oops private house walkers that away and with the arrows and that's this is a new sign but the same the original was was written by David Lapham himself he was like he just wanted to say very nicely that away Right, so we'll turn to our right and go down the uh, hill and we'll be going down the Lapham Road for a short bit uh, with a lot of um, uh, water on either side of the road. And again, this is all part of the road. This is draining out down below into the Silas Inn and onwards. And wonderful little swamp filled with frogs and peepers and turtles, spotted turtles and even a mallard duck. Uh, quacking away at me. <laughs> hidden, but not completely hidden. And as you come into the end of the road, uh, you will come up to the other entry to, um, to the Clayhead Trails here, um, right here, and here it is there. Now, from there, you just walk out the road and back to the parking area. But we're going to magically jump back to where we uh, turned off with a little sign that said that way to Corn Neck. And we're going to go this way for a little while and take a different loop back. And not too far along, you'll see this wonderful tree. It's a, I think they call it a self pruning spruce, but I have always called it the Druid tree. And uh, it's quite tall now, but when I first uh, noticed it hanging around up there, it was about four and a half, five feet tall. It was taller than, uh, it was not taller than I am. Now it is a lot taller. And this was one of the plantings. And again, in the background, there's a rhododendron. So the daffodils are not the only thing to see at the Clayhead Trails. And as we keep going, you'll come to a place where this path is completely intersected. And there's another sign that says, to Corn Neck Road. Um, and if you were to go that way, you'll come to what we call the Blue Trail, and we'll be on that shortly. And if you go this way, it'll take you straight out to the bluff where you can get to the Bluff Trail. For now, we're gonna go a little bit further. Um, oh, that's just showing what it says. That one, you can read much 
better, two corn neck root. And we're going to come out of this little thicket of trees into a big field, um, again, with some daffodils hanging out there. Um, and the, the morning boat coming in. So we're just going to go a little bit. This is where you have to decide, am I going to retrace my steps? Am I going to go through the field to go down to the Clayhead Trail Bluff? Or am I going just a little further, just to the edge? and come out just to look at Stump Pond, the origin pond for much to the water that we've been talking about. So it's, it's only maybe a couple hundred feet and you can see it from where I was just standing. And you can go down here and there's on the left, yeah, left is Stump Pond, another great place for birds, including uh, wood duck and ducks. And I saw my first prothonotary warbler along this pond. And right across the path is this giant cedar, which is just uh, fun to, um, to notice. It's always a lot of birds in that, especially chickadees. Chickadees love that, that giant cedar. So just gonna turn around. You can, at this point, you can, as I indicated, you could either go through the field or you can go along the edge of the field, along the edges of the path. In the summer, this will grow up quite a bit but, and end up down here in this corner, which is where you would pick up the uh, bluff trail. Or you can turn around and notice that you've been walking in a dewy morning and follow your footsteps back just a little bit till you get to um, a second uh, entry to the, um, to the blue trail. Now, the first one we saw had a sign. This is only about 100 feet beyond that. Um, it's not signed, so you can go back to the sign if you want, or you can go in here and a good marker is this big evergreen, which uh, is actually a, a fir, a really beautiful fir, very lush. And um, well, one thing, when you turn over the uh, branch, you notice that the, 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 the stem is, is bare compa compared to the top. So beautiful lush uh, fir. Um, and if you go just beyond that, you'll see there's an intersection. This is where the, the path that had the sign meets up the path that has the fir tree. And this is the blue trail. And you can see the, the hint of another boardwalk. And there it is. And there we can see more moving water. Um, it's kind of low. Often um, it's higher at this time of year, but if we get any rain, it'll build up. And these places, by the way, are wonderful places for irises in, in a, you know, early June because of the wetness. They just love that. Uh, and there's a very large tree back here, but um, we never get to it. It's in the, it's, it's, you can't get to it. Well, I guess if you went bushwhacking, you could. Uh, so you actually go along this trail and um, it, you go up a little hill here and off to the right is a swamp maple, which has that very distinctive sort of branching stumpy base. And at the top, this halo of, of red maple flowers. And you keep going and more beauty, the stone walls are revealed at this time of year, more lichens, I didn't go too close this time. And, keep going and some things that aren't quite so beautiful. Um, again, this I did this because on this side of the path is multiflora rose. That's what all this green haze is. And on this side, it's uh, honeysuckle. And almost everything you see green on Block Island right now, except for the grass, is an invasive species, honeysuckle or multiflora rose. And uh, here it is in both of these pictures, they're both in there. Honeysuckle is over here. Multiflora rose is a little lighter. It's a, it's a little bit behind it, so the leaves aren't quite as big yet. Again, here's the multiflora rose. Here's the honeysuckle leaves, all getting ready to just hang on everything. Uh, it's winding up. This is the honeysuckle winding up in the trees, arcing over, reaching out for something else to grab onto. Tons of honeysuckle. They have a rather, no, look, the only good thing about honeysuckle is it doesn't have thorns. <laughs> um, but here's a great image of how it twines up a branch. And at each little node, leaves out, puts out another runner. Here's another image of the same thing, the twining around the branch. 
putting up these each node, another bunch of leaves and some more, eventually more runners to, to take over and choke out um, whatever it's hanging on to. And then the multiflora rose, as I mentioned, it's a little behind it. So it's a little bit more hazy looking right now. It looks a little lighter. It's not quite as dense, uh, but it's there and it's gonna be strong and its leaves are serrated uh, and there's lots of thorns in the multiple rows. So you can definitely tell the difference, but doing much the same thing, a vine winding his way around at the nodes, leaves coming out. And um, let's see what, this is uh, again, a little comparison right here. Are the honeysuckle smooth, a little bit more fleshy, <clears throat> Uh, even edges, whereas the multiflora rose is, is toothed, sharper, and not such a fleshy leaf. <coughs> Forgot my coffee there. <clears throat> so as you come up this hill and after admiring all the greenness that's growing on, that's an invasive species taking over the island, you come to another intersection. And we're going to stay straight or more or less leftish this way to keep on the blue trail. Uh, but if you were to go this way, you would go into a big long field that, that is called the upper quarter. And uh, it would take you into this pathway here. It actually is a wonderful uh, field as well. It's very long, it makes a nice, it has a path along the whole edge. It makes a nice sort of exercise loop. Uh, as long as it's not hunting season. And it has a little bench right here for you to um, perch if you like uh, and to enjoy the view. They put that there because the view from this hilltop used to be spectacular. You could see both the uh, new harbor and the old harbor. Now the multiflora rose and the honeysuckle and all the brush has grown up such that you can no longer see those views. And that's always a, a constant discussion about how can we reclaim that view without doing too much damage. But for now, uh, you, you can still sit in the bench even though you can't see anything but a wall of um, invasive vines. So back we go and we're not going into the upper quarter, we're going back on the blue trail. We're gonna, this is going downhill and you come downhill to this point where there's an intersection from another path, but stay, left, you go around this tree and you're going around towards what's known as the big pine. And uh, this is a very tall, big, giant pine. Um, and so we go to that and the path actually goes down and then it curves around it. As you can see here, it comes down and curves around it. And you could go this way um, on the blue trail. And I should say the blue trail has little blue flags um, markers along the way, uh, plastics like survey tape. Uh, they're not up to date right now. There's a few over there, not as many as there will be uh, shortly. They redo them in the springtime. But the big pine you can see from many places throughout the Clayhead Trails because it is so tall. Um, and, and, and before all the underbrush grew up the way it has, uh, in the 60s and 70s, you could see this big pine from everywhere in the Clayhead Trails. And it was a great um, you know, way post. But now there's lots of stuff under there, underneath, what's underneath the big pine? What is underneath the big pine? Well, lots of needles. Um, this is a, a branch. This is how I know that the big pine is actually a pitch pine. Uh, the needle, this is a, these are dead, but uh, they would be green, of course, but they come off in clumps of threes. And this is a, a very fresh pine cone, this year's pine cone, very distinctive shape. It's got a little keel on each of the blades. So positively identified the big pine as a pitch pine. And at the floor coming out in many places throughout Clayhead, but especially under the big pine, is a uh, vinca, and I hope I have that name right. I, I know it as periwinkle, um, so it's sort of an escaped naturalized wild plant, uh, and beautiful, as is the pine cone. Um, you can hear, you can see the little tips there, and um, down here you can see the 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 uh, what they call the keel of the of the uh, of each piece of the 
pine cone. And the vinca is a little tube-like flower, very star-like, bluish, wonderful, beautiful plant. And also under the big pine, you can find drop sticks with these brand new shelf fungus. These shelf fungus are just growing this year. They're very supple. I could push those down and they would spring back up. They wouldn't break off. So these will be growing. And this is a kind of lichen that you often see uh, up in the trees. It's not the bushy beard lichen, but it is a, another lichen that likes to be up in the trees. And um, you go a little bit further on the blue trail and you'll come to this little, I always call it a grotto. I'm not sure if that's the right word. It's just, you can walk in and it dead ends, but right at the path, you see this wonderful little bunch of daffodils. This is a big oak. This is a chestnut. And in the back of this little grotto are several rhododendrons that will be grown. You can see them uh, from the path. It's not very far, but you can go in there and just enjoy the sights and then come back and continue on your way. And as we head back towards, um, the glade where we're heading, uh, you can look to your left and you'll see another big swamp maple. And this maple is so big and you can just get that sense of the haze of red. But when you're on the Lapham Road, looking this, looking towards this way, towards the nor north, you can see the other side of this big maple. Here on the trail, looking south, you see this side of the big maple. So it's pretty big. Um, and again, right now it's very distinctive because there's not much else other than the green of, of, um, of those invasive vines and the nice red tinge. And of course, now we have another green, beautiful invasive growing and this is a uh, barberry. Um, and you can say, oh, it's small. It won't do any damage, but it gets bigger and it gets bigger. Uh, it's very thorny, uh, that does produce quite a few berries. It is invasive, it's being, the seeds are being scattered by birds and it's popping up all over the island. If you have it in your yard, try to remove it. A lot of people planted barberry as a hedge. It was originally thought to be a good, a good um, sort of uh, horticulture plant. And, uh, but like many things, when you look closely enough, you find uh, some beauty. And uh, this, they are just budding out. These will be little tiny white flowers. And the, um, the leaves are qu quite beautiful, little oval-like and smooth and not thorny. Um, but there's, there's one, that there are some big thorns in the barberry. <laughs> I think I'm talking too much. Oh, here's a, uh, we're still going along on the blue trail. There's our, one of our blue pl flags. And uh, we're almost to the end where we see, oh, it looks like another boardwalk. Sure enough, this is a, a yet another one draining out water from above. This is coming from a different place, not from Stump Pond, a, a different up pond up further up upland but it is ending up in the same area. It's pooling in those in the wet spaces on the north side of the Lapham Road, flowing underneath at one point, going to and running out by the um, Silasen lot down across the Clayhead Trail and into the Clayhead Swamp Pond. Um, and all these boardwalks are not for people, they're for the tractors. <laughs> Never mind. On the other side of the boardwalk, we're starting to see that coming into an opening. And you'll come in and there'll be this, this little meeting tree. You can see here's the little clump of daffodils. That's right here. It's going to be blooming soon. You can go either way and you will come into this wonderful glade of daffodils and rhododendrons. Um, and this is called the catbird seat. I've always wondered what that term meant. I still don't know, but nevertheless, this little glade uh, is referred to as the catbird seat. And it's a beautiful place. Um, and this is where you can come out and meet the Lapham Road and then proceed on to uh, your, um, you know, whatever you, if you drove, walked, bicycled, whatever. 
Um, and if you get out to the road, you turn around and here's looking in to the catbird sea, trails to the cliffs, and it has a little blue there indicating that it's the blue, the blue trail. And uh, quite an assortment of signs, uh, but of course they start with walkers welcome. So that is the overlying, overlying principle of this great gift of the Clayhead Trails um, from the Lapham family all the way back, starting in the 1960s, a little before. Walkers welcome. And the maintenance and the beauty that they've added is, well, I just cannot say enough about it. So we are done with our walk. I've, usually I add in a few things I've been seeing this week and uh, the last you know, a few weeks since my last presentation. And what I've been seeing is lots of tiny flowers uh, and found in the most unusual places. On the left is a, a flower called henbit. Uh, henbit, yes. It is another mint. You can see that distinctive shape. It has uh, alt uh, opposite leaves and actually it's a square stem. I forgot to mention that on, on the punella. Uh, this was growing in the bank uh, below uh, um, the uh, traveling seamstr seamstress. And this is a plant called Storksville. It's a, a tiny geranium. Both of these, well, you can sort of tell this one because my finger is there. It's how small it is. This is about a half an inch, maybe a little less growing very low in the ground. Uh, and this is in a field right next to town hall. Uh, I, and I wouldn't have noticed, I've never seen it before. I just noticed this like little patch, like a little patch of purple carpet. And there it was, beautiful, tiny and beautiful. Um, this is called mouse ear cress. Uh, many cresses are actually in the mustard family as is this. This is a very distinctive kind of mustard um, form right here. It's called a, uh, there, there in the cruciferaceae family. This is an eighth of an inch, tiny, but beautiful. And of course, there are lots of violets. I love the whitish, the white violets. I'm not sure this, I believe, might be the northern white violet, but I didn't pay close enough attention to the shape of the leaf to give it an exact um, identification. And then last night when I was going back to do one more picture or something at the Clayhead Trails, this large bird flew and landed in a, uh, in a branch and I, oh my God. So I got out and I took a couple of photos as best I could, as quickly as I could. It's a turkey vulture. And I was quite surprised to get even somewhere close to a halfway, at least a diagnostic photo. Couldn't end without my bird checklist for the last few walks in the Clayhead Trail South. And with that, I am uh, happy to take questions and thank you for your attention. I do love doing these. I'm gone, I guess, right on time. <laughs> and I guess I'll uh, go ahead and stop sharing. And if Great. Thanks, Kim. Um, anyone can unmute themselves if they like. Um, somebody chatted, I think maybe just didn't mean to chat it to the group, but wondered, Kim, if you're ever tempted to carry hand clippers on your walks and sever the Japanese honeysuckle vines when you see them. <laughs> I often, I've actually lost more hand clippers that way. <laughs> But yes, I do. Uh, the honeysuckle and the multiflora rose and the bittersweet. Now, I didn't focus on the bittersweet much because it's not so evident. I mean, it's twining branches are evident everywhere right now, but it's not leafing out just yet. But all of those, you're right. If just cutting them at the base, just to, you know, break the flow of energy between the root system and the plant can definitely help so yeah. that's great um and there's also another comment that there is an explanation of the catbird seat in wikipedia which may be uh, applicable so we okay. definitely do google that after 
I've heard it, but you're right. I'm not quite sure. I think I've looked it up and I wasn't satisfied with the answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Well, thanks, Kim. I enjoyed seeing some of the paths that I never venture down and maybe I'll be brave enough to do it now. Yeah. You know, I think that a lot of it is we go what we're used to and because we're afraid we're going to get lost, but we have to remember it is Block Island. You won't get lost forever. And almost all of the paths loop back and connect to the main artery of the path along the edge of the bluff. So even if it's not looping back, listen for the sound of the ocean. Remember that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So depending on the time of day, go towards the sun and you'll end up uh, or away from the sun, if it's in the afternoon, you'll end up at the cliff trail, and then that give you many marked opportunities to get back to the corn neck road. And some of the little loops are just really worth it, if for nothing else, the surprise of what you find there. So it's amazing. It's an amazing system. So, it's not all about the daffodils, which are quite stunning right now. <laughs> Well, anyone want to say other questions or if not we got next week not next week i'm sorry kim but the next one coming up may the 5th is on oh, yeah. early birds early and birds yeah and i'll have uh i'll be I'll have a lot of photos of uh, early bird migrants that are returning or maybe passing through. This is definitely the time of year to see be uh, the beautiful the beautiful plumage of birds. And I will probably be I will be doing the Zoom this style, but I will be in my banding room as long as it's not a rainy day. And I may even pull out a live bird to show you. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it may not all be photos. I'm hopeful. Thank you. Kim. I Thank thought you, Kim. There, were several, um, there were several photos where you said, look at this view. It's green invasives. Everything you see is a green invasive. And so I felt that one way to sort of understand the green lines was to think that they were also invasive and underlining. The green lines are underlining the green invasives. Ah, OK. I thought that was funny. <laughs> That's good. I don't know where those green lines came from. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure. I think someone might be able to like make marks like on the Zoom screen. I'm not mm -hmm. even sure because it kind of followed through. Um, yeah. So it was a little bit of a mystery there, but yeah. I might we'll try to, to look I'll into that. Yeah, sorry for the distraction there, Kim. I know that was, uh... yeah. Well, I once, one I, once I knew to distract it, then I knew it was fine. Uh, Stephen, you have a question? Yeah, I've been, Kim, as you know, I've been walking those trails for 50 years, and those boardwalks have been there since the beginning. Is that something that the Lapham's put in? Or do you have any idea of the history of who put in those? Yeah, uh, the, Go ahead. The, uh, yeah the boardwalks, uh, except, for the, except for the very first one, I think, uh, that we went on, I think those were put in by the Nature Conservancy when they opened up that when they opened up the Clayhead Trail went back in the 70s, I think it was when the deal was made with the state and the Nature Conservancy, other landowner and the trading of land and established the parking lot and the and the parking head and and made that connection. I think I think the, that one, the very structural looking one. Uh, was done by the Nature Conservancy or the or the DEM, and maybe Charlotte can tell me. But all yeah, the other yeah. ones, all the other ones were built by the, David Lapham, David and Elise Lapham, their kids, now their their grandkids. Um, and it's for the mowing. It's to get from place to place with the mowers. Um, I will say the very first time I met David and Elise Lapham, I was helping Hank Lemoyne do a, a nature walk in the Clayhead Trails and we ran, we had to stop because these two people on each on their own green John Deere tractor were cruising through. <laughs> and the amount of uh, maintenance uh, that those trails took to create, and that was back in the, 
I think early 80s. Um, but yeah, it was all about getting the tractor from one field to the next so you could mow things. So um, I don't think there, I think there's only one that I know of is hasn't been repaired, uh, but almost all of them were done by David Lapham and whatever helper he, whatever house guest he pressed in the service. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I'm glad you noticed those, appreciate those. Oh yeah, definitely. 